So let's continue on with this composite illustration. I'm going to go back into my layers panel and uh, we had just been talking about the uh, barbed wire uh, fence um, or the sorry the chain link fence uh, but then uh, the next uh, layer in our layer stack is this sign here um, and uh, there's a couple things I'd like to do with this sign. Uh, for one thing uh, let's uh, open up the uh, or let's place why don't we place we'll go and place the um, fallout center uh, fallout shelter sign I'll just select it there and place that um, but you can see there's a couple things we need to adjust. Uh, first of all, it, um, the color needs to be adjusted and um, its uh, shape needs to be uh, adjusted because what I've got here is, uh, is, a, is a, that illustration in a um, perspective. Um, now, there's a couple of different ways we can do that. The easiest way is if I were to um, go to image adjust or sorry, edit adjust and select transform, um, you can see that the I have this uh, option called distort. And I can, uh, with that chosen, uh, just adjust each of those anchor points like so. And that was essentially all I did with with that fallout shelter, just to sort of give it a little bit of perspective. Um, something in that range there. When I've got the shape that I like, I'm just going to select OK. Um, there's one other thing I need to do. I'm it's not in its final position, but I'll just edit it here. Um, I would like to turn this into a um, not just a black and white graphic, but a, a red and white graphic. And uh, the best way to do that is again to select that layer in your um, in your layer stack here, and um, I'm going to add an adjustment layer. The first adjustment layer is again I'm going to go to uh, the threshold. And I love this effect. Now again, of course, the threshold by default affects all layers below it unless I click this button, which limits it to just that uh, uh, layer beneath it. And um, let's see, I'm going to, yeah, I'll, I'll put it, yeah, I, I can play with it and get the, the effect that I want. I, the, something like that's probably just fine. Maybe a bit more of the border right there. Okay. Um, but of course I need to add one more adjustment in order to color it and uh, in order to do that I'm just going to close that. I'm going to add one more adjustment layer and I'm going to go to hue saturation and I'm going to click down here where it says colorize and again it needs to be limited to just the, the layer uh, beneath it and actually let me make sure that I have that. Yep, that's the right one. Um, and I'm just going to open up my adjustment layer again and what I need to do is I need to lighten, sorry, lighten and bring up the saturation and I need to find the place on our hue slider here where that, there we go, that's going to, there we go. I want something very red, uh, quite saturated, maybe not that light, maybe something about there. I think that's just fine and um, then I, I can place it where it needs to go and select it in its layer stack. And uh, if I can press Command T, that's a keyboard shortcut for the transform, uh, and I can just hold down my Shift and Option buttons at the time to constrain the proportions uh, to that. And that is essentially how I created my red fallout center sh uh, sign. In fact, I will get rid of this one here. Now you can see that there's in fact a drop shadow on that sign as well. I press Enter to select that. Um, so I'm going to, uh, there's a couple different things I could do. I could just go uh, double click and select drop shadow. In fact, that's probably the easiest way to do it. Select drop shadow and um, let's see, I will select multiply for its blend mode. Whoops. No, I won't. Uh, let's see. The There we go. I need to select Multi uh, I need to. What I had here was uh, the entire layers uh, blending options. What I need to do is select the drop shadows effect uh, drop down, and that would be uh, multiply. And let's see. I'm going to move the distance off just a little bit. Make the direction this way. Move the distance off just a little bit, and affect the spread, and maybe even the size a little bit. There we go. Okay. The next um, 
uh, the next texture or the next layer in our uh, composite was a, a texture of a wall. Um, and this was again a texture that I, I got from uh, CG Textures this time. Um, and I just uh, opened up uh, their concrete uh, section of their of their site and just got a nice texture of concrete wall uh, and set the blend mode to color burn. Um, and uh, when I set that to normal, you can sort of get a sense of what that looked like otherwise. But I'm just going to set that to color burn. Color burn is a very nice blending layer because it allows the color intensity beneath the, uh, the layer to come through. Um, and that's just what I wanted. All right, let's move on. Again, our next layer is the barbed wire layer. And this I did just as I did the, uh, the chain link uh, layer um, by opening up opening up the the file chain like we want barbed wire barbed wire there we go and again I would like to convert this into a graphic uh, image um, I can do a couple different things here of course but I, I the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, unlock that layer I'm going to select the whole thing and copy it Bring the whole image as is into my uh, into my composite, uh, and I'm going to resize it just a little bit. And from here, I can do um, again select that. I with that layer selected, I can again go to my adjustments layer, select um, threshold, clip it to the layer beneath it, and um, but actually that's yeah that's that's fine in fact I'm going to reduce that just a little bit to about there and I'm going to say okay um, and I'm going to set that to multiply whoops set the actual layer to multiply there we go but of course I did the same thing um, with this barbed wire that I did with the chain link where I have uh, a black and white and a um, uh, sorry, a black copy and a white copy. And again, that was just a matter of um, uh, selecting the, the layer, uh, selecting the black part of the layer and copying that selection and filling it with white. Okay. Now we're getting to a couple of different areas that, um, well, in fact, let's, if I turn on this balloon and, uh, you can see that there is in fact a, a an outline around that balloon um, but what's most interesting and a, a lot of people ask me about is how do you create this halftone dot effect in um, in Photoshop uh, well let's do it with let's create that halftone dot effect um, by uh, reproducing the halftone dot effect that is currently around this boy and that's that halftone dot effect is supposed to represent some radiation so let's just uh, take a look at how we did that. I'm going to, in fact, turn off the the dots that are currently around that boy, and we're going to start fresh. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select the outline of this boy, and the best way to do that is to hold down your command button while you click with inside the preview uh, window inside your layer stack. There you go. And I now have a uh, marquee selection around that boy. I'm going to expand that, however. I'm going to go to uh, select modify expand and I'm going to uh, yeah I'm going to expand it by 10 pixels that's fine now you can see that that marquee has just expanded ever so slightly around that boy I'm going to create a new layer now just click on the new layer icon and on that new layer I'm going to fill this selection uh, just with this uh, light background color I'm going to do so by uh, clicking command delete on my keyboard uh, and that fills uh, your selection with your background color. If you wanted to fill with your foreground color, you would press Option Delete. Uh, but in this case, I want the background color, so I could push Command Delete, and there we go. I now have a um, a selection uh, that is filled. Uh, what I need to do now, however, is I need to select not the object that is filled, but in fact the selection itself and I can do that by clicking over here on the quick mask mode if I just click that once you can see that now that selection is uh, no longer a marquee selection it's just showing me this pink 
this is a, a, a different way of working. It's not, like I say, it's not selecting the object on this layer. Remember this, we filled that layer. It's not selecting the pixels on that layer. It's actually selecting the selection itself, which means that I can um, make some adjustments to this uh, uh, layer. And the best way, one of the most useful things about Quick Mask is that you can actually do something like this. For example, I can go to Filter drop down menu and select Blur and select Gaussian Blur. And look at that. You can see what's happened here. I've actually blurred not the object on that layer, but the selection. Well, why would I want to do that? Well, here I'm going to put this right about there. I think that's probably a good value. Um, well, by blurring that selection, um, there allows me to do something. I can actually apply an effect to that selection. And the effect that I'm going to apply is, again, under the Filter drop-down menu, Pixelate Color Halftone. Now, the, the secret to using the Color Halftone is um, first to select um, a maximum radius, a dot radius large enough um, to... Uh, to be able to be seen, um, and when I say when it says max radius, uh, it's referring to the maximum size of one of these dots. And you can see I'm sort of showing you the halftone dot around this balloon here. Um, that sort of determines how big those dots are going to be. Uh, I'm going to set that to 20. The other thing that is very crucial for this effect to work properly is to set all your uh, channels one, two, three, and four to the same value. Now that doesn't have to be 45 here. 45 is just referring to the degree of uh, the angle of of which these uh, the dots are going to appear um, and I usually use 45 but you could set them to any value here but as long as that they're the same and I'm just going to select that and say okay now you can see that that selection that quick mask selection is now have a, a half tone dot effect apply to that well why would you want to do that well I'm going to turn off the half tone dot effect for a second and you'll see what's happened here is in fact, I'm just going to zoom in, that halftone dot effect is now um, a selection. And once it's a selection, we can fill it with any color we want. Remember, we were able to use the, um, to fill with the background color by pressing uh, command uh, delete. Um, let's again apply this to a yet a newer, a new layer. I don't want that layer, that, that was just sort of a, an intermediate stage. But now with this new layer selected, and with that halftone dot uh, selection, I can now fill that with the background uh, color. So I'm just going to do that command delete. I can turn off my selection now. I'm going to slide that layer again underneath the boy and that is how we can create that halftone dot effect um, very easily. Um, in the next video we are going to continue on with a, a few other small uh, steps and then we're done.